Hello everyone, I think we can start. So I'm Melanie Rivia and it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to this new REXM webinar. As you might know, REXM stands for Research, uh, Research and Expertise Center for Survey Methodology. It's a research center that is based at the University Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. And that is mainly focusing, as the name indicates, on doing survey methods. Um, the center also organized different activities like these webinars. But we also have some method schools, one in winter and one in the summer. So if you want to know about all the different activities of the center, just follow us on social media and you will get all the information about the different activities. For today, we will have a webinar that uh, is explaining the results of a study that has been implemented in the frame of the Web Data Project. And I'm the principal investigator of the project, so that's why I'm also showing this webinar today. So this is a project that has been funded by an ERC grant and that focus on trying to get better on new insights that goes really beyond conventional web survey data by looking at new types of data. So the project actually considered different types of data like voice answers or web tracking data. But for today's webinar, we are going to focus on the potential of using visual data. So uh, the different presenters will speak about an experiment in which we ask people to share photos of the book that they have at home in the frame of a web survey that also included more conventional questions. So we will have two uh, different parts. In the first part, Patricia is going to speak more about the design of the study and the more methodological research that has been done with the data. And Patricia is a researcher at REXM and she's a doctoral candidate also at UPF. She's actually in the very last days of her PhD. And then in a second part, we will have Anna and Birgit that will present some results that are a bit more substantive. In particular, they will focus about the link between the books that people have at home and if these books are for children or also for adults and the student academic achievement. Anna is a postdoctoral researcher at the Institute for Educational Quality Improvement in Germany, and Birgit is a professor for empirical education research also uh, in Germany. So we will have all the presenters speaking one after each other, and then we will keep the questions for the end. So when they will, all of three will uh, finish speaking, you can just turn out, uh, turn on your microphone and you can ask the questions. Or if you don't want to use the microphone, you can just use also the chat and I will read out the questions. So without further ado, please, Patricia. Thank you for, for the introduction, Melanie. Thank you for thinking that in my, in my last days of the PhD. I also hope that. <laughs> uh, well, um, today I will be starting with, with our webinar that is titled uh, Rethinking Research on Books at Home using photos to study the impact of home libraries on children's academic achievement. As Melanie mentioned, we performed this study together well, with Melanie and also Anna and Birgit and Clemens Lechner from Gesis. They also funded a part of the study and it was mainly founded by, from, uh, by the European Research Council under the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme. So visual data is, a, as Melanie was mentioned, uh, a new type of data that can be collected through surveys and has been gaining relevance in the last years because either images or videos have the potential to decrease the respondent's burden, to increase the data accuracy and quality, and to provide new insights when asked to respondents of a survey compared to conventional survey questions. And the literature so far about the collection of this type of data is still limited, and we still need more research on whether participants, uh, respondents will participate in this type of questions when posed in an online survey. And more, moreover, we still need more literature on how to measure the quality of the photos sent through uh, web service because they have a specific characteristics that I will mention later. So here there were two gaps. And moreover, there's limited literature, but also is very limited in terms of the topics that they are dealing with. So we wanted to uh, create more research on this, but focusing on a relevant topic for the social sciences with this, which is our main field. Uh, so we decided to focus on the books at home, particularly in the number of books at home, as this is a question that is being asked in some questions in social science survey. 
So this study is developed within the Web Data Out project, of which Melanie is the PI and was in collaboration, as I mentioned before, with Clemens Legner from Guesses and Anna Birgit, who will be presenting after me. The protocol for this, is, uh, this study is available in Open Research Europe, when you can see all the details on the design. And we had two main objectives with this project. One was methodological, to compare how different methods to collect information about the books at home perform in terms of participation and quality, and a substantive objective, which will be is related with what, with what Anna and Birgit will be presenting later. So we did an online survey that could only be answered from a smartphone or tablet because we wanted respondents to have easy access to the camera function on their devices. And the survey was collected through the NetQuest online panel in Spain in June last year. We targeted parents of children in the first, third or fifth year of primary school and this target population which make more sense when um, Anna Birgit explain, explained their, their research. And at the end, we had 1,202 respondents finishing the survey and 1,270 re reaching the questions about books, to which I will refer now as test questions. And we did not ask information about ebooks, but only of physical books in the households. Uh, there were specific reasons for this. If we want to discuss them later, we can do after our presentation. So uh, participants were asked to either answer uh, questions about the books they have at home or, or sometimes also to send photos of such books. So we had two main formats, the conventional and the image-based one. For the conventional one, there were uh, different dimensions that were asked. First, the number, first, the number of books, uh, for which there were four open-ended numeric questions um, about the total number of books at home. And then respondents were asked to allocate this number in three different categories of books. First, books for children who don't know how to read, then books for literate uh, children and teenagers, and then books uh, aimed at a general audience. So these three categories, uh, the sum of these three categories should bring the same value that the total number of books uh, stated at the beginning. They could type uh, the books in a text box. Then we have a second dimension of languages. In these questions that were open-ended questions, also numeric were responded could type in the numbers. They were asked for the percentages of books in Spanish in any of the three official languages in Spain and in other languages. So these three categories should add 100 when summed. And finally, for the storage, we had four radio button question that had as response categories, yes or no, to know if books were stored in different places, different types of storage systems. And for the image-based question, uh, respondents were asked to send photos of all the books in the household. Then the information of interest, which is all the the dimensions that I just mentioned were extracted manually by two researchers. Within the conventional format, format there were two methods. Um, they had in common the questions for the storage and for the languages, they were the same, but there was a slight difference for the question about the number of books. And the first case, in the case of the method text, uh, respondents were straightly direct for the uh, ask for the number of books, but for text plus, they were shown this illustration that show as a quantity of books in 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 a shelf of the same measure. So that could help them estimate uh, the number of books. Uh, so at the end, we had four groups. Uh, participants were allocated in only one of them. The first group called choice. Well, they had a choice. They could choose their preferred method. They were said, now we're going to ask for some information about the books at your place. You can either answer 11 conventional questions or send us photos of those books. So they could choose. And then the other three groups were asked for the information with two methods. So for the text, text plus group, they were asked for the number of books first without the illustration that I just showed you, and then with the illustration, and then the common questions about languages and storage. Then the text plus images group, they were asked for all the information about the books with this illustration, and then they were asked for the photos. And finally, the images text group, they were asked for photos of the books, and then they were asked the 11 conventional question without this illustration of reference. To collect the information, we use the tool Web Data Visual, which allows to uh, 
to capture the photos within the survey. So respondent didn't need to leave the survey, go to the camera, take the photos, go back to the survey. Everything was within the survey and they could uh, take the photos with this camera icon in, in here. And uh, respondent could upload as many photos as they wanted and they could preview, delete and retake all the photos. And the information was classified by two researchers, as I was mentioned before, with an overlap of 100 images uh, to see how the classification uh, process was going, was performing. Um, we did detail, detailed guidelines for this, which are available in Open Research Europe, the article that I mentioned at the beginning. So the focus of today's presentation will be on the results about participation. Uh, and the results on data quality regarding the data, the information that was submitted by respondents. So for participation, I mentioned before that we have these four groups and we wanted to know how participation will be in a real survey. With real, I mean not in experiments and asking the same information in different methods in the same survey. So if participants were just faced with the first question about uh, the questions about books, uh, how the participation will be. So we focus on what we called the time one. Um, in the group, uh, in the first group choice, the time one is either method because participants were asked, uh, they had the choice to choose, the option to choose, and then they only answer with that method and that's it. And in the second group, we focused in the method text. In the third group, only focus on the method text plus. And in the fourth group, only in the method images as all these methods were the first moment. And furthermore, for the text and text plus group, we weren't interested on the effect on participation of this image of reference. So we merged participants in only one big category uh, uh, of participants being in the group text, which led us with four groups, the groups text choice and images choice, meaning those participants choosing their their method and those assigned to a method without the option to choose which are the group's text and images. This allowed us to do analysis contrasted first by format, meaning the conventional versus the image-based format, and then by group, text versus text choice and images versus images choice to see if the option to choose had any impact on the results. So first, the preferences that were asked only to the choice group um, we found that most respondents in the choice group prefer to answer through conventional questions and only 4% of the respondents chose uh, images, which I must admit was a bit disappointed. Um, but well, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, we can see that respondents mostly prefer the conventional questions. And there was a 10% of people saying that they don't have any preference. And in this case, this, these people was were assigned to the group of images, so they had to answer through images. Then we analyze the breakoff, meaning whether people left the survey, and we focus on the breakoff on the test questions, uh, both conventional and image based. And what we found is that breakoff is higher among those answering through the image based format, with 8% versus 1% in the conventional format, and that there are not differences based on whether they had a choice or not. Although we can see there's a difference for images and images choice of 8 and 2%, but the groups of images choice as so little, uh, um, so as only few people chose images, this group had, uh, I think, 40 participants. So the results are not significant, but we can see here a, a pattern or a trend in this case. And then we have the part levels of participation, meaning providing answers. And we use different uh, measures for conventional and for the image based methods uh, because. Uh, in the conventional, we had 11 questions, so it was measured on how many questions you answer, but it wasn't unequal to the images. You, it doesn't mean that 11 images would be the complete participation. So we use a different standard. In this case, for the conventional, it was minimum, partial, and full participation, depending on how many questions they had. They answer being one, six, and all the 11 for each category. And what we find is that almost all participants sent all the information, 80% answer all the questions. So there are no issues in terms of participation for the conventional method. Um, what's more, the option to choose doesn't have any impact on that. And then for the images, 40% of respondents sent at least one image. One image might be all books. Maybe if you have all your books in one big shelf, yeah, only one photo was needed. Um, so we consider sending at least one photo. 
And in this case, there were difference based on whether they have the option to choose or not. So those with a choice, 54% of them participated. Again, those assigned to images were 38 people uh, percent uh, of the people participated. That's for data qual uh, for participation. And now I'm moving on to data quality. Uh, for the sake of time, I will try to go quickly with this part. But believe me when I say that there was a gap in the literature uh, to measure the um, the quality of the photos submitted through online surveys. There are a lot of literature and pieces of research for quality of photos in other fields, like for example, computer vision, but photos in surveys have distinct characteristic. And the most important one is that the information from these photos uh, will be generalized at least to a sample and maybe also to a population. Uh, which is different from the perspective in computer vision. So we couldn't rely only on that. And what we did was uh, we did a huge literature review of all the indicators of quality in research uh, survey methodology. First, we started with the conventional questions, seeing if any indicators in there could be applicable to, to images, then to image-based uh, research. That is research that was already asking for for photos, but maybe they weren't defining quality indicator as such. Um, they were maybe describing the data, but we identified some of them that could be used as quality indicators. And then we did the same for other new types of data, mainly voice data provided through online surveys. With this review, we created a list of indicators, which allowed us to first measure the quality of the conventional question asking the information about books, then to measure the quality of the photos containing the information about books, and some indicators that allow us to compare the quality of the information when provided through both formats. In this case, we focus on the three latter groups in both moments because we wanted to compare how the, the quality varied, particularly for the two larger groups that provided through both formats the information about the books. So for the quality indicators for the conventional questions, we identify big four indicators. First, having non-substantive answers, which in our uh, survey translated to having don't know answers. For the questions on the number of books, respondents could type in a number or mark a radio button that said, I don't know. And if they marked that radio button, they were faced with a new question saying, hey, we know that you said you don't know, but can you give us an approximate number? So they could either type in the approximate number or say, mark this radio button saying, I still don't know which is the approximate number. Then rounding, that is respondent providing answers finishing in zero or five. Then we focus on the values out of range with the question of languages. Since we were asking for the proportion of languages uh, in three categories, None of the answers could be more than 100. And then the sum of the three language questions should be 100. And then we, fo we focus on the discrepancy. Uh, there were a lot of indicators of discrepancy. In here, I'm only going to show this. There is the difference between the total of number of books reported being different than the sum of the three book categories. And then the total number of books reported through text being different than the total number of books provided through text plus. And in this case, the bigger the value, the lower the quality. So first we find that between 20 and 42% of the respondents say that they did not know how many books they have, which on first sight is quite high, but then not as surprising because even I that have been working in this research for a while don't know how many books I have in my place, like the exact number. Um, so yeah, this is high, but, but again, not surprising. But then in the second question, like give us an approximate number, up to 19 people of people say that they could not even give an approximate number. And this, I think it's more um, sensitive in the sense that it's a huge number of people that cannot even give you know, an approximate of, I don't know, something around 20 or 30 or 40 or some number. And then for the rounding, we found that as much as 77% of the responses were rounded and that which is, is an indicator of lower quality because it's very unlikely that everyone has 50, 60, 70 and so on books and not 62, 73 and so on. Then for the indicators of out of range and discrepancy, in out of range, we see that values were quite positive. No language question was over 100. And the sum of the three language categories being different than 100 occurred only for 6% of the respondents. However, for the discrepancies, 
it's more more critical in the sense that 52 to 57% of the respondents, uh, the total number of books reported by them was different than the sum of the three book categories. That is more than half of the respondents. And then 43% of the respondents provided different numbers of books when asked through text and then through text plus. For the indicators uh, for image-based answer, we identify uh, four main indicators. First, being in line, which the criteria for being in line was having at least one book in the photo. Then the potential of classification. Uh, there was one in general, whether the photo had enough visual quality to be analyzed. And then for each of the dimensions of interest, being the number of books, the categorization of books in these three categories, the languages and the storage. And we did this because maybe in one photo you can count the books in total, but you cannot tell how many books are in this or this category, or you cannot identify the language. So we needed to identify the potential of classification for each of the dimensions. Then having problems while answering and the integrated reliability between the classifiers for the photos in common. So uh, now it will be quick for the sake of time, but good news is that the visual quality and most of the photos were also in line, almost 99% which is positive. And then for the potential classification, we have more mixed results. What is good is that in more than 60% of the photos, all books could be counted and categorized. Uh, and in the rest of the photos, it's not that this was not possible, but it was possible to a partial extent. That is that some books could be counted and some books could be categorized. In 39% of the photos, all the titles of all the books were visible. And I think this is important because even if it seems like an, uh, a low number, we have information of all the of the books for 40% of the photos. That is information that currently is not being collected in conventional surveys. 27% of respondents had at least one problem and 21% of them said that they were unable to capture photos of old books, which already hints us that at least one fifth of respondents did not send photos of all the books. And for the integrated reliability, I'm showing the percentage agreement. Uh, we also did other calculations that led us to to uh, to know that the the the, quincy, the consistency between the two classifiers was low to moderate. In some cases, the agreement was of a hundred percent, and in some cases, on twenty three percent, with the categorization of books being the most critical um, dimension. And then for the quality indicators for both formats, that is allowing us to compare both formats. First, we focus on non-response, but we use a complement, meaning the proportion of respondents for whom all the information is available. In the case of the conventional question was having answered all the 11 questions and the image base having information for all the items, the equivalent to answering all the 11 questions. And then we focus on the discrepancy of answers between formats, because since we focus only those group answering through images and through the conventional format, we could compare the results and see if they are the same, which in theory they should be, but we will see more of that now. And for having all the information available, 76% of respondents provided information for the 11 items of interest, but this could be the case only for 4% of respondents answering through images. And the low number of images, um, it could be of respondents for which uh, we answering through photos for which all the information is available could be because less than 40 percent send photos also many books were unable to be categorized so if in one photo with a thousand books even one was unable to be categorized this was considered missing information and also some languages could not be identified and as for the discrepancies uh, we can see for the number of books there are a lot of discrepancies they were almost never the same when comparing what the respondent said and what was counted in the photos. Then for the languages was some quite a lower for Spanish was very, very low, which are good news and understandable because it was the predominant language uh, in the books and also in the classifiers. And for storage, we also have differences to some extent up to 50% of the results of the photos. So for the conclusions, uh, respondent mostly prefer the conventional format and participation is key. People are not participating as much as they do in the conventional question. And also uh, the missing data occur more among image-based answer compared to the conventional one. And one critical step in this case is classification. There are a lot of classification challenges that lead us to this and that it needs to be put more, more attention to. However, even if photos are challenging, the conventional questions are not perfect. And we found high instances of don't know 
and of rounding. So there are still shortcomings when it comes to data quality of the conventional questions. So overall, I would say that photos are promising, especially for the data that is not being currently collected, as I mentioned before, the book titles, which would give us more information on what are actually the books that people have and how they relate with what is going to be presented later by, by my colleagues. So the, the recommendation for now would be to complement both formats to get high participation and less missing information. For example, asking for photos of the books and if photos are not being sent, then propose the conventional question, but we still have challenges on which uh, format is giving us the more accurate data. So that's on my side and I will pass the button to my colleagues. Um, so yeah, we are happy to present in this uh, webinar. Um, and as you've already heard, this is also joint work by Anna and me, and of course with Patricia and Mel Melanie. And um, yeah, some of what we'll present now um, will be familiar to you now after the talk you've already heard. And yeah, we'll focus on the question, which books contribute to explaining student achievement and how? So just some background. So social inequalities in student achievement have been well documented across countries, domains and age groups. Um, showing that students from families with low SES usually perform below students uh, from families with high SES. And yeah, as you already know, <laughs> we focus on the number of books at home as an indicator of socioeconomic status for several reasons. First, it is a very frequently used measures or, uh, measure also in studies that focus on elementary school students like in the present study. And it shows substantial relations uh, with various indicators of student achievement. So, for instance, with um, math performance, math achievement and reading achievement, but also, uh, for instance, with the years of education someone receives. But there is little knowledge about the processes explaining the relations between the number of books and student achievement and also yeah, quite little knowledge about the quality of the number of books at home as an SES indicator when we use it in the conventional format. So first of all, I would like to give some theoretical background on the relation between SES and student achievement. When we look into the literature here, most of the literature focuses on resource and investment oriented approaches. So the, the basic idea in these approaches is that social inequalities are the results of different amounts and kinds of resources families can invest in their children based on their socioeconomic status. And um, these resources can be economic resources like household income. When your household income is higher, you can buy better or more high quality learning materials or also pay for private tutoring, for example. Then social resources, um, th this refers to the access to social networks that provide an, an important information, for example. And then cultural resources, and here we distinguish um, qualifications on the one hand, then certificates and titles and cultural goods. And the number of books um, actually form part of the cultural book, uh, cultural goods. So, And the idea is that, well, it's not just the number of books at home that uh, foster your achievement, but something has to be done with these books. And they are considered a potential learning stimulation at home. So, and this already brings me to possible mechanisms that can explain the relation between the number of books and student achievement. Um, and one possible mechanism would be the home literacy environment. The home literacy environment uh, describes all, all sorts of everyday learning activities within the family to support children's language skills. And the ho home literacy environment comprises a wide range of activities, more formal activities like teaching letters, for example, or more informal activities like joint book reading or talking about reading experiences. And of course, all this is connected to the books you have at home. And the idea is that um, these uh, linguistic activities foster students' language skills, which are necessary for, of course, their language um, achievement, but also their achievement in other domains like mathematics. And there is indeed 
quite a large body of research that shows that the home literacy environment is associated with both language and mathematical skills, um, but it shows larger correlations uh, with language skills. And there's also a heavy research focus on the assessment of the home literacy environment in preschool children. So yeah, there's little interest uh, on what happens with the books at home once children go to school. Yeah, now I've already talked a little bit about the mechanisms and of course the question arises, which sorts of books uh, are most suitable for initiating such learning stimulation such, yeah, uh, or to foster the home literacy environment. And one possibility, of course, is that children's books play a more important role for stimulating such learning interactions at home than parents' books. Um, there are some studies that already combine the number of books, which usually refers to the number of parents' books, um, and the number of children's books in a single measure. And they also show that the number of books is predictive of student achievement. But of course, um, such studies do not allow to single out the effects of parents' books and children's books. Um, and there are yeah, very few studies that also show that there are associations between the number of children's books and test scores beyond the traditional books at home index. And in this context, I would like to very briefly mention a study um, yeah, that Anna and I did together with another colleague, Melanie Olczyk, uh, on the, the validity of the traditional books at home index. And this study was actually um, also the basis uh, for Melanie and Patricia to get in touch with us, <laughs> which formed the basis of our collaboration. So here we were interested uh, in the role of different indicators of SES and especially of different variations of the books at home uh, for explaining students' achievement. In this case, this was um, academic language comprehension. And what we found here, so or the most important uh, results now for this presentation um, are that both the number of books and the number of children's books um, contributed to explaining academic language comprehension, but that there was no effect whatsoever for the number of ebooks, and this was also a reason why it was not included in the present study. Yeah, but of course there are still further issues uh, around the validity of the tr traditional books at home index, and uh, Patricia has already <laughs> explained some of that uh, in her presentation. So one issue is the questionable accuracy of the tradi traditional books at home index. So of course, if you are asked about the number of books, there may be um, tendencies of um, social desirability, or of course it's also difficult to know the exact number of books. So here, um, new technologies um, may come into play or they uh, allow for different ways of assessing the number of books at home. And of course, taking photos um, as a data collection method might improve the accuracy of the measurement while decreasing the participation burden. Here, we've already seen that the last part is not completely true uh, in this study, yeah, but it may uh, increase uh, accuracy. So the presumably high reliability of the number of books when assessed via photos allows for using it for cross-validating results of the traditional books at home index. Yeah, and then finally, when doing research on the role of SES for student achievement, you have to decide upon the, the indicator of student achievement. So usually, uh, or most of the research focuses on achievement test scores, so yeah, assess the relation between the number of books at home and achievement test scores. Another possibility would be school grades, um, which are usually characterized by a high curricular validity and instructional sensitivity. So they really display what is actually done in class, but they are relatively low in objectivity. So we know that um, the same performance can be graded very differently by different teachers. But still, um, it is our school grades are relevant for a range of outcomes. So for, for instance, for self-concepts and then also for educational decisions and later educational success. So they are still a worthwhile indicator for student achievement. And with all this background, uh, I now come to our research questions. So first we investigated whether different measures of the number of books at home 
conventional questionnaire item versus books and variation. So parents' books versus children's books are highly correlated with each other, which is with each other and with school grades in Spanish and math. And then, as I said, we were particularly inter interested in the mechanisms explaining relations between the number of books and student achievement. So we investigated whether the number of books are related to home literacy environment, and we thought that this would be the case. Then uh, we investigated whether home literacy environment related to student achievement in Spanish and math, and also here we thought that this would be the case. And then finally, we investigated the mediation. So whether the relation between the number of books and student achievement is mediated by the home literacy environment. And how we did this and whether this is really the case will now be presented to you by Anna. Uh, our dependent variables were school grades in Spanish and in mass on the scale from zero insufficient to four outstanding. As an indicator of socioeconomic status, we use parental information on the highest education of the responding parent, which was ISCAT coded. Uh, as to the number of books, we used on only information from the one group, which Patricia already presented. So was, first of all, uh, parents were asked to provide the number of printed books at homes, excluding e-books, magazines, newspapers, and children's books, and then the number of children's books at home. And um, in uh, comparison to conventional question, which is all which is uh, often asked in such studies as PISA and PIRLS, parents are not provided with response categories, but with uh, visual aids, which you already have seen. Parents are also asked to provide photos of the number of books at home using the software Web Data Visual. And again, they are provided with visual aids. Uh, you see on the left side um, an example of suitable photo for the coding, and on the right side an example of an unsuitable uh, photo for the coding, for instance, plants and other object heights, books and book titles. As for the home literacy environment, parents are provided with different statements. For instance, there were statements on the frequency of different activities, such as how often parents read to the child, how often parents talk with their, child, with their children about the things they, they read. Um, and also on such statements uh, on how how far family likes reading and how far reading is considered to be an important activity in the family. Confirmatory factor analysis proved the unidimensionality of the scale, which had good reliability. We calculated correlation between the number of books as uh, assessed by the conventional question and as assessed by photos and found high correlation for the total number of books, for the number of books for literate children or teenagers, for the, tot for the number of books for children, which is the sum of the number of books for children who don't read by themselves and the number of books for literate children or teenagers. And uh, we also found high correlation for the number of books for the general audience. The low correlation was observed only for the number of books for children who not do not read by themselves. In the second step, we uh, calculated correlations between the number of books as assessed by different methods and grade in mathematics and Spanish. As for the number of books as assessed by the conventional question, significant correlation was observed between the number of books uh, for the general audience and grade in Spanish and between the number of children's books and grade in mathematics and in Spanish. As for the number of uh, books as assessed by photos, only one correlation was significant. This was the correlation between the number of children's books and grade in mathematics. In the next step, we wanted to investigate relations between the number of books and uh, school grades with structural equation models. Uh, first of all, we uh, we calculated a model in which effects of child gender, language spoken at home, and parental education on the home literacy environment and school grades were estimated. We found significant effect of parental education on the home literacy environment and significant effects of child gender and parental education on grade in Spanish and on grade in mathematics, meaning that girls and uh, children from families in which at least one parent had high education, had better grades um, in comparison to boys and children from families in which at least one parent had raised a low level of education. 
we didn't find significant effects of the home literacy environment, neither for great in Spanish, nor for great in mathematics. In the next step, we added the number of books for the general audience into the models. Here you see on the left side uh, in red effects for the model in which the conventional book question was considered, and on the right side in gray effects for the model in which the number of books as assessed by photos was considered. Um, first of all, you see significant effect of the number of books for the general audience on the home literacy environment in case the number of books for the general audience was assessed by conventional question, and the effect of parental education on the home literacy environment remains significant. The effect of the number of books for the general audience was not significant neither for grade in Spanish nor for grade in mathematics in mathematics, independently on how the number of books for the general audience was assessed. The effect of parental education and child gender remains significant in both models for grade in Spanish and for grade in mathematics, the effect of parental education remains significant and the effect of child gender was only significant in the model in which the conventional book question was considered. In the next step, we entered the number of books for children into the models, and we see significant effects of the number of books for children on the home literacy environment in case the number of books for children was assessed by the conventional question. The effect of the number of books for the general audience became non-significant, and the effect of parental education on the home literacy environment remained significant. The number of books for children had significant effect of on grade in Spanish, but not on grade in mathematics. For grade in Spanish, significant effects of parental education and child gender remained in both models. And for grade in mathematics, significant effect of parental education and child gender remain, uh, remain significant only in models, in the model in which uh, the number of books as assessed by the conventional book question was considered. The effect of the home literacy environment on grade in mathematics and in Spanish were non-significant. So what we found was a high correlation between the number of books as assessed by conventional question and items and as captured by photos, and overall the similar results pattern for the number of books as captured by conventional question or items and as assessed by photos. Thus, uh, we, can see, uh, we can say that conventional questionnaire items on the number of books are sufficiently reliable indicator of the number of books. The uh, only low correlation which we found was between the number of books for children who, not who do not read by themselves as assessed by the conventional question and as assessed by photos. This correlation may be due to the difficulty in the identification of the books for children who do not read by themselves. For instance, parents can co consider these books, um, can think that these books are, do not, are not the same as the books which were coded um, from photos. The number of books for the general audience was not related to school grades, but it was the case for the number of children's books as assessed by conventional question, which was related to the grade in Spanish, also when the number of books for the general audience and other covariates, such as parental education, language spoken at home, and child gender were controlled for. Thus, the number of children's books may be considered to be an important indicator of socioeconomic status beyond the number of books at home, not only for achievement test scores, which was already shown in few studies, which investigated relations between the number of children's books and uh, also when controlling for the, number of, the total number of books at home, but also for school grades as in another indicator of school achievement. The number of books for the general audience was related to the home literacy environment only if the number of children's books was not considered in models. And uh, there were no relations between the home literacy environment and grades in Spanish and in mathematics when parental education was considered. This may point out to different mechanisms relevant for the relation between parental education and students' grades. For instance, parents with higher education may use different strategies uh, in, than parents with low education to support school success of their children. For instance, parents with high education may help their children with homework, use uh, private tutoring, and their stronger social connections to the teacher. 
Overall, we didn't find home literacy environment to mediate associations between the number of children's books and student achievement, which can, uh, can have many fault reasons, such as, for instance, operationalization of the home literacy environment. Mirgit already said that many previous studies were focused on uh, home literacy environment on uh, in preschool children, and overall current opportunization of the home literacy environment includes aspects that can be considered antecedents of the number of books rather than consequences. So, for instance, families which like reading and consider, consider reading to be an important activity, which uh, more often read uh, with parents who um, often read to their children, maybe families which buy books more often than other way around. So causal relation between the number of books and the home literacy environment are still unclear and should be investigated in future studies with longitudinal design. Overall, we found uh, answer on our first question, which books contribute to explaining student achievement. These are children's books assessed with the conventional question. But as to the second question, how books contribute to explaining student achievement, the answer remains unclear. Our study has limitations. We used cross-sectional design with students attending grades 1, 3, or 5. And we used school grades as the outcome variable which we are more prone to, which are more considered to be more prone to bias and achievement test scores. Overall, we would recommend to assess the number of children's books using a conventional question item in large-scale surveys focusing on student achievement due to raise a low uh, time, which is available in large-scale studies, high acceptability of the number of of the conventional number of book questions and the relations between the number of children's books and school achievement. <music>